In this tutorial, we're going to talk web scraping. We're going to use, utilize framework called Beautiful Soup. And so do a quick Google for Beautiful Soup tutorial. We're going to kind of work through a basic introduction. Then we'll do something that's a little more practical. And then I'll challenge you to do something on top of that. So let's start with our basic tutorial. You're going to need a Linux machine for this. So you'll want to uh, take a second, do your EC2 setup, make sure you do your apt update. Um, and let's go ahead and create a folder to work in on our EC2. So I'm going to mkdir soup. So I have sudo su, I'm in a folder called soup, we're ready to go there. We're going to be creating some Python. Uh, files really one python file that's a web scraper let's apt install uh, python and we'll just be using regular old python and we're also going to need to install one other package our importer for python we're going to have to apt install python hyphen pip just like that i always have great expect oh no i went for great expectations python pip just do it And let's review a few basics that make working from the command line a little bit easier once that's installed. Uh, we're going to do pyco, and I'll just call mine uh, scraper.py. And if I'm in here and I were to do like uh, test123, remember to save, it's control O, right? And then so I can save this with control O and then uh, just hit enter and then control X to exit. But the easiest way, because we're going to be jumping in and out. We're going to be writing some code. We're going to be testing the code. We're going to be going in and editing the code. And you don't want to keep like opening it up. So remember, you can background with control Z as in Zulu. Control Z will background and it will allow us to run our program and see what's up. And then when we want to jump back in, we can type FG, which is to foreground by default it foregrounds the most recent process. So that control Z, F, Z, F, uh, G routine is going to be super important here as we move through. All right, so once we're set up and we've done those two installs, we'll be installing other things as well as we move forward. Beautiful soup tutorial. Uh, let's find the programmers, his, no, datacoest.io tutorial, uh, web scraping with Python using beautiful soup. It's datacoest.io. And they provide, we're going to scroll down until we find, uh, and you want to read through this if you're not familiar with the structure of simple HTML or you need to refresh your pay, uh, yourself. If you look at the source code on most web pages, you'll see it starts with HTML. We have a head element that contains meta information. Most pages will have body elements that outline what's in the body. Uh, there's a CSS that goes along with it as well. All right, so let's scroll down to where it says the requests library. And we're going to be utilizing this datacoest.io, this particular web page right here, uh, that is on uh, its web scraping pages, simple.html. Why don't we copy that right now and uh, just paste it into our web browser and take a look at this. And I'll choose view page source. As we go through and we want to kind of scrape, content you want to look at the page source that's the easiest way to figure out what's there and we can kind of see that we have html we have a head title underneath our html we have a single title it would be easy to say okay look for the head tag find the title and extract the text if we wanted it we have a body tag that has a p tag which stands for paragraph it would be pretty easy and beautiful soup as we go forward to say find the body tag and uh, extract either the first p tag the second p tag all p tags and print the text that's in there. All right, so this is a pretty simple one that we're going to be able to just kind of chug through and look at how we can identify the different tags and extract information from them. Okay, so we're going to grab this first chunk of text here, and let's just copy it. Import requests. We're going to create a page variable, and we're going to use the get method, which is what we use for most web pages, to fetch that simple web page. So here I am, and I just right-click to paste into PuTTY after copying. That's the nice thing about it. 
and we can see that we have import requests. We have a page object that's going to use a get request to fetch that simple page. And uh, we'll have a page object then that we can kind of work with. So let's test it. I think we're going to have to do some more here to make it work. Control O to save, Control Z to background. I'm going to Python scraper.py right now. And you can see import requests, there's no module name requests. So in this case, that's a pip install. And we should be able to pip install requests. And that'll bring on our Python request module into the system. And it's a nice thing about pip, it's kind of a no-brainer. All right. So now let's try that again. I'm going to hit the up arrow to help me out. Uh, and I'm going to use Python scraper.py. And it runs and it prints nothing at all. So now I'm going to hit FG to get in there. And uh, let's just put a print statement in here. Again, this is simple Python. We've gathered a page using a request, and we haven't even gotten into Beautiful Soup yet. And let's just print the page, that page object, and see what it looks like. Control O to save, Control Z to background, and then Python scraper.py. And you can see that it returns a response code of 200 when we print that. Now, 200 is a response code that's good. Um, this is good for this class. I'm going to point something out real quick. And response codes fall into a series of 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. The 200s are all good one way or another. 300s all indicate a redirect. Um, those 300 response codes are something you might look for in a security operations center. You may be redirected to a bad site. The user may not know it. So those 300 response codes uh, can be problematic. Maybe not. Uh, we have the 404, for example, not found. Uh, some of the more common ones, 403, forbidden. All of these are errors with the client, and then the fives are server errors. The ones are informational. So these categories of response codes, kind of interesting to keep an eye on that and just think about those uh, going forward. Good thing for anyone who's in a class like this to kind of have an, a lock on the different response codes in the categories there. Now this page object here that was brought in from request is going to have a member called content. And so let's try that inside of our Python right now. And let's print page.content. See if that works. And you can see that by printing page.content, it goes out, it fetches that web page, and it did it all in real time here. And you can see we have that very simple web page that we can then begin to parse through using Beautiful Soup. So we're going to scroll down a little bit more parsing a page with Beautiful Soup. And we have to do from BS4 import Beautiful Soup. And uh, now that we've used request to grab that page, we can create a Beautiful Soup object out of that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just copy this. We're going to use our HTML parser. There are other ones. It may be XML on the web that you're trying to grab. Uh, beautiful soup is pretty easy to use, but when you get deep, it's pretty complicated too. Uh, it's pretty neat. So I'm going to copy that. Foreground this. And uh, so I'm going to get rid of my print statement here because I don't need it. I'm going to use control K to kill that line. And by the way, I could use control U now to repaste that line if I wanted to. Control K to kill. So I've done my import requests. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to paste my from BS4 import, I'm going to use control K here on the second line that says soup. So I've got two import statements at the top. I get my page and now I'm going to use control U to bring that soup in because we need that page here that we grab in order to create a beautiful soup object. So take a second, make your code look like that. All right, so let's do a print and then just soup here. And let's just look at what it looks like. I'm going to save that, control Z. And then I'm going to Python my scraper here. And you can see from BS4, import beautiful soup, we have nothing. So that's a pip again, pip install BS4, just like that. It's going to go grab all the good stuff. I'm going to clear that out. We're going to run our scraper, and you can see that uh, when we print our soup object, it looks like this. Everything's on a different line. Sometimes it'll all come out on one line. And let's do a soup.printify. Let's see if that does anything a little bit different.
and you can see that uh, it's formatted a little bit differently here. I'm going to verify. You can see that I forgot my two parentheses here because the prettify is a method that we're calling. And so I just tried to do that from memory. So I'm going to hit FG here, and I'm going to go two parentheses like that because we're calling a method. Let's try it again. And you can see with, that's what I was expecting. With Prettify, you can see that we have our, this is better because now we have a head that's clearly associated under HTML. We've got our doc type tag, and it's pretty easy to see where things are right now. So here's what I'm going to have you do for part one in Python. Uh, with the snipping tool, you'll find a, um, I'm going to create a new one here. You'll find a turn in for uh, beautiful soup part one and just snip where it says in your terminal scraper.py and I can see that it basically has um, the output of that simple HTML and you've clearly called the prettify method with it and you'll turn this in as a screenshot to where it says checkpoint one in uh, beautiful soup turn in on Google Classroom. Once you've done that, it is time to move on to the next video.